In this lecture, we are going to study about steel fabrication. Steel fabrication is a process used to manufacture steelwork components that when assembled and joined, form a complete structure steel frame. The fabricated components of structural steel can be easily assembled at site. There are two types of materials used in fabrication. One, mild steel. It is the least expensive material available. It is most commonly used. These material is easily weldable and is very hard. Two, is EN8. It is medium strength steel with good tensile strength. It is tough and hardened with higher carbon content. It has better elongation properties than mild steel and so is used in anchor bolts. There are number of differences between shop fabrication and the on-site fabrication process. Like, the quality of material fabricated on-site is of lower quality compared to shop. Labor cost is higher in shop than compared to field. And, there are more chances of delays of work on-site compared to shop. There are 10 basic steps involved for a typical fabrication operation. Starting with first, surface cleaning. It is important to remove the mill scale prior to the fabrication process. It can be done by various methods like hand preparation by wire brushing or rubbing emery paper. All the rust should be removed and the surface be roughened. Step 2. Cutting and machining. There are different methods used here like shearing and cropping. In this step, sections are cut to required length or width by using hydraulic shears. Also heavy sections or long plates can be shaped and cut to length by specialist plate shears. Flame cutting method involves cutting off sections as required by using flame. In this steel is heated locally by a pressurized mixture of oxygen and a combustible gas such as propane, which passes through small holes in a cutting nozzle. The steel melts at 1500 degrees Celsius when a jet of high pressure oxygen is introduced to it. Use of this method for cutting is advantageous as no power supplies are needed and it is a portable method. The figure shows, the steel bar is being cut by high pressurized gas. Next technique used for cutting is by, arc plasma method. In this method, the cutting energy is produced electrically by heating a gas in an electric arc produced between a tungsten electrode and the workpiece. It can be used on thicknesses up to about 150 mm but the process is very slow. It is generally used for thin welds in the case of stainless steel architectural components. The figure shows the arc plasma method of cutting metal. The plasma arc is normally operated with a DC requiring a large amount of power. Cold sawing method is used when a section cannot be cut to length by other methods. The saws used for structural applications are mechanical and feature some degree of computer control for precision cutting. After the cutting and machining process, next comes punching and drilling. It involves making holes in the structure material. Large fabricators have installed NC, that is, numerically controlled tooling. These machines drill holes in response to keyed in data feeded in it. They can make many holes required for joints bolts in flanges or webs of rolled steel sections simultaneously. Next comes the straightening, bending, and rolling process. Rolled steel gets distorted due to various reasons like cooling process during transportation and handling or during punching operations. Metal straightening or leveling process 
is used for straightening different types of steel materials like rounds, sections, pipes, and flat products after their rolling. Sections might also be needed to be bent for manufacturing of tanks or aesthetic looks. Straightening is done by either rollers or gag presses. The majority of curved steel is curved by roller bending which is a cold process. Roller bending involves progressive bending of a section by passing the member through a set of bending rolls. The rolls are shaped to a cross section of steel member being curved. Force is applied across opposing sets of rolls and more curvature is introduced in each pass through the rolls which is repeated until the curvature is achieved. The fifth step is fitting. The main purpose of fitting is to hold the two pieces of metal in place while you apply the actual final weld. This is usually done by clamping for tack welding. Tack welds let you weld without the worry of your metals getting misaligned during final welding. Tack welds are weak welds and can be removed easily. Removing is necessary when alignment is wrong. The process of connecting or joining parts for final assembly is called fastening. The strength of the entire structure depends upon the proper use of fastening methods. There are three common methods of fastening. Bolting, riveting and welding. Finishing is the process of changing the surface of an object for the purpose of improving its appearance and or durability. Steel is subject to cutting, burning and welding through the various steps of fabrication due to this. There are welding marks, oils, greases that need to be removed. Most commonly, a grinder is used to remove loose material and make welds or edges smooth. Inspection forms an integral part of quality control. The purpose of quality control is to check that the requirements of the specification are being compiled and to provide a report with proper records to the client. Surface treatment is the process in which the structure surface is cleaned. Number of methods can be used like blasting followed by applying paint, which is the most common method. Painting is usually a two-step process, application of red oxide or zinc oxide primers and then application of oil paint, epoxy or polyurethane, PU, type paints. Galvanizing is also done for surface treatment, which is long-lasting. Advantages of surface treatment If you perform surface treatment methods there are fewer maintenance requirements. The structural steel will be less prone to rusting and corrosion. There will be an increase in durability of the finished product. It will be environmentally compliant, more aesthetically pleasing, and damage resistant to external forces. After previous processes are done, the last step is to assemble all the components, tie them and cover them properly to reduce the risk of accidents and transport the finished goods to the required site safely, by means of a flatbed truck or any other suitable vehicle.